Today we are going to send UDP messages from the ESP to all devices in our local network. If you don't remember what is UDP and how it is different from TCP, you can find a useful video in the description below. UDP messages are really handy when it comes to tiny messages to several recipients at the same time. Especially if we have a smart home or a lot of sensor devices connected to the Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Let's check out our repository and go through code. Copy, open command line, git clone and our repo. Now let's open Visual Studio Code and open the projects. Select our folder yeah, and press trust this project. Uh, some more. Yes. Now we need to set up ESP IDF plugin. Press view and command palette and find ESP IDF configure plugin. Select Express. The latest version is 5.1.2, so use it. And we can replace path here. Select our folder, copy and paste it to the second field and press install. Luckily, we can speed up the process. If we see this window, it means that everything is ok and we can close it. Let's review what we have there. ESP32 is a C project, so we can open CMake lists file and see. We have several modules like Nerdy Wi-Fi, Nerdy UDP client, Nerdy server and Nerdy Mac address. All of them you can see in this panel and all of them are included into the our project. Our entry point is main. We can open main and we see app main file, C file. If we open app main C, uh, we can see that it has app main method. It will initialize operational system. After these lines, we are ready to operate with our ESP. Next, we should connect to Wi-Fi. And uh, for these purposes, we trigger Nerdy Wi-Fi Connect. Nerdy Wi-Fi Connect is located in Nerdy Wi-Fi module. Let's open it and review. We have Nerdy Wi-Fi config.example file. It's an example of our Wi-Fi configuration. We should copy this file and put it in the same folder but without example uh, extension. So we will have nerdyconfig.c and in this file nerdyconfig.c we should put our real access point name and our real access point password. ESP will use these credentials to connect to our Wi-Fi. Let's open nerdywifi.c file. This file has nerdy Wi-Fi connect method. This method initializes the connection by itself. It has uh, Wi-Fi access point name and Wi-Fi password. All events about Wi-Fi connection will go to method called event handler. Let's go and review it. We see that this method receives Wi-Fi event and IP event. And IP event is useful. Uh, we will receive real IP address here and we will save this IP address uh, into local variables. Let's see, uh, we have Nerdy Wi-Fi IP address and Nerdy Wi-Fi IP broadcast address. We can imagine that it will be this address, for example 72, and here for broadcast we'll have 255. 255 means that we will broadcast a message to full subnetwork. All computers in range from 0 to 254 will receive message that was sent to this IP address. And that's it for Wi-Fi connection. We can save and close it. So we are back in main and we see Imitate UDP message sending is called next after Nerdy Wi-Fi connect. This method imitates UDP message sending. It's a simple loop. 
in which we do a delay with some interval in our case it's five seconds and we check if uh, we received IP address from our router if we have IP broadcast address it means that we are connected to Wi-Fi next lines we create a message that will be sent to the device and next line we actually sending this message we sending this message to our IP address to port and we have message as parameter next we release this message so let's review how we send a UDP message we can open a UDP client UDP client class has only one method called nerd UDP client send message and it has three parameters uh, IP uh, sorry IP uh, port and message in the top of the file we have parameters next we open socket and we send a message to the socket and the last line are closing connections we can close this class go to app main we need to connect our ESP board to our laptop via USB then we should uh, select USB serial and our project now let's press build flash and monitor okay uh, now we received Wi-Fi event 4 and we got IP address here now our messages are printed here and it means that we have sent messages to the local network we've sent it to uh, this IP address and to this port now let's try to receive it on our laptop for this purposes we should use Wireshark application you can find it in the description of the video when we open Wireshark we should select our network interface in my case it's Wi-Fi now we see all internet connections and we need to filter uh, let's type udp.port and our port and now we see only messages from our ESP32 we see that new messages are coming here so everything is working and we are ready to review our server application let's go back to Visual Studio Code let's scroll down and comment the method that sends messages and then the comment method in the bottom of the file it will start listening to a port and will receive all UDP messages to it let's go deep in this method the method is located in nerdy UDP server model and we see that it creates a task a task that will run in the background similar to client UDP server has some parameters and it also runs in a loop the server has a read timeout and if the server doesn't receive any messages during that timeout it will be ended and restarted right after next we set parameters and also we have another loop uh, here here it is it happens when data received we sending back a message the same message and in the end of the uh, loop we close a connection and that's it for it let's open let's run uh, build flash and monitor and now we can see logs from our ESP32 we see that uh, UDP server was started and waiting for data we can open new terminal here 
and use uh, socat command and send broadcast messages from command line let's copy it and paste okay it works like etcher we send message one and it receives one in return and we can see that esp also received this message let's send a second message message two we received it in return and we see it on esp and last try message 99 yep it works we received and we sent basically that's it for the server what we've seen is that a single esp device sent a message into the local network and all devices in this network received it so that's it let me know if it was useful and thank you for watching